those people haven't made a decision that they got to go out there and lead their lives. And they're just, they're simply leaning. They're leaning up on the broken system, on broken corporation. There's 40 million people today that are like sick and tired of realizing, man, I've been leaning so much. And when you're leaning, you're leaning up where you fall, you fall down. It takes so hard to get back up. It's about leading, man. You got to go lead. You're listening to the Seven Figure Squad interview with cash flow millionaire, my business partner, Jose Gaetan, married to Marlene Gaetan. I think, I think Marlene is starting to kick off her podcast or her social media too as well. Uh, it was an Academy of Affluence or something like that, right? Yeah, she's very excited about it. Yeah, she's so very excited about it. Uh, from the Maldives, here we are in Palm, Palm, uh, Palm Beach on the yacht. The first night that we got there having a blast, I caught, I caught, I caught up to you guys. Me and my wife caught, caught up to you guys and we get on the yacht with yourself and then our Greg share different conversations, man. When we you started know, this 10 years ago, it, no one was talking about raising $500 million like this access to billions of dollars. <clears throat> so different conversations were on the yacht and talking about where we, where we've been, where we're at today, <coughs> and where we're going. Unreal, bro. You, you know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because you know, the, the, the conversations you and I were having on that yacht where guys had already been in the money game for a long time, right? Yep. Uh, Greg, you know, share, you know, his, his parents were involved in entrepreneurship, they involved in business. Um, Greg share went to Wharton Business School. Yeah. And uh, for, for, for the people that you don't know, uh, people that know who Greg Share is, Greg Share is actually – uh, an investor in PHP agency, uh, Oscar De La Hoya and Gabriel Brenner's uh, confidant to invest $10 million into our firm uh, three years ago. Anyway, my long story short, so we're having a conversation with him now. You, myself, uh, George Palayo, we're having a conversation. So what was it like for you to talk to a guy that's been 20 years plus in the, in the money business, private equity, Wharton Business School, analyzes businesses, flips businesses? Well, I mean, what was that situation like for you to, you know, to just expose that conversation? You know, now being at, uh, at 43 years old now, being older, more mature, you think my, my, the 23-year-old guy, uh, the 25, 26-year-old guy that got involved in a business versus the guy that I'm at today, today when, you're, when you're in your 20s, when you're early in your career, yeah. you, think, you think that conversation is so far away. You think, <laughs> you think it's not reachable. You think you're not going to be able to relate. You think it's just like so far away. And the reality is it, it's not that far away. That co those conversations, then the associations, uh, the bigger thinking, talking about what it's like to, you know, help invest in companies that, that become billion dollar companies, talking about how we, we're part of a company that will become a billion dollar company. It's so, it's so in interesting, man, when you think about it, because of the maturity level that I've, we've, we've gotten to today, and to be able to have, now have access, have relatab re relatability, um, to know that you're, you're, you have associations that, that you can leverage in the future. You have part of, they're part of your, your Rolodex now that you can have access to in the future. It's great to know that, man, that you're just not that far away. You're just a few moves away. You're just a few moves away, and you want to do it sooner than later. And, but to know that uh, we have those relationships now through our mentor, Patrick, and the people that uh, he's put in front of us, man, it's, it's priceless. It's, it's great. You can befriend these people that really, you know what? The great thing about that is that it's so, it's so uh, reciprocal is we feed off of these guys. Yeah. And these guys feed off of our fire. So right? weird. It, it, because they, they love the juice, right? They love, they love what we bring to the table because of the fire, the excitement. They love that momentum. But we also love the conversations that we have access to. And, and I saw that. Like it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a mutual relationship, which is awesome, man. It was good. It, it, the, the coolest part about that fire, Jose, is that when most companies are laying off people yeah. during this COVID pandemic, I think, I think the number was like 40 million people right now are on, 40 million people right now are on unemployment. And um, I think one, one, they said one out of four people, one out of four, one out of four people right now are on unemployment. Yep. Uh, yesterday, you know, Ann Taylor, Justice, uh, parent company, filed for bankruptcy. 
And I know you know nothing about justice, but uh, uh, when I, I got twin girls and they got their ears pierced at the mall. You know, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? That the little trinket store. Um, no, 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 I know you got twin girls, so I can I can only imagine, bro. <laughs> yeah. And so they got their ears pierced at just anyway, that company that made these little girls get their ears pierced at at the mall, that company filed bankruptcy. Um, and they're thinking about revisiting a second stimulus check, a trillion dollar package again, stimulus package again. And yet to talk to these guys in private equity, billions and billions of dollars that they're used to managing and investing and whatnot, to expect us to drop by 20, 30, 40%. And yet we went opposite. We grew by 40% yep. from last year to this year, all done in a virtual environment. And yep. you know, as, an, as an entrepreneur, Jose, how have you adjusted? How have you adjusted to you know, the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, man, I, I love what you said, bro. And, and to, get, um, to get validation from investors like that. Yeah. Say, man, uh, <laughs> you know, w w w I'm diversified, but if there's one, if there was one company to pick, to pick, one company to run with, it'd be PHP, and they're, they're already nicely invested with us. It's, it's great validation, man. Great validation for, for us. Uh, the adjustments, man, we just, we've been a company. You know, when you're part of a big ship, when you're part of the Titanic, it's very hard to move that Titanic. There's a lot of a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of time before you can move that ship, and it moves so slow. Yeah. So when it, when a pandemic hits, these larger companies, these companies are not prepared. They're moving so slow, at a speed that is so frustrating for so many people because the guys here that want to go run, they cannot run because of the bureaucracy, and these big companies. Uh, with with the with the layers and layers and layers of of bureaucracy, they cannot adjust. They can't pivot. So when that happened, boom. When that happened, ha ha. There you go. This is us look, last week, man. Look at that conversation there, man. That that's a that's a billion dollar shot. That's a billion dollar shot right there. <laughs> Beautiful. And all those homes in the back, we're like, man, what is that? A five million, ten million, thirty million dollar home? Easy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But those conversations we're having, man, if, if the waves could speak, you know what we were talking about. Yeah. It was, it was priceless, man. We had a great time. And then we had dinner with him. And then we had a chance yeah. to have dinner with him. That's right. We're having dinner with a great share. Our CFO to my left. You got my wife to my right and the Paul's in front of us. It was a good topic, man. Good, great conversations, man. Great conversations. We've come a long way, man. We've come a long way. Oh, do you have a college degree? You got a college degree? I got, I got a, uh, what, what is it? A MBA. A I got an MBA. That's what I got. You have an MBA? Yeah, MBA, man. I have a PhD. <laughs> we, a public high school diploma. Well, there you go. Yeah, I got one of those too, man. <laughs> but the MBA is the massive bank accounts. There you go. That Those are what counts today, man. Those are what count today. <laughs> um, but yeah, bro, it's, it's so great to know that, uh, that our investors, people that are, are, they forecast companies, they forecast trends, they forecast the, the 2020, 2021. They're so used to forecasting of what's gonna happen. And they don't just pick any companies. They, they pick, what, three a year or so? Three a year they invest yep. in? Three or four a year, yep. They decided to pick our company because they, they forecasted where we're at today. But I, I guarantee you, they did not expect that 30, 40% growth that they, we've been delivering. So to, to go back to your question about how have we adjusted, it's because when you've got the leadership, when you got the momentum, you got the vision with our company that's innovative and doing things that never been done before through Zoom, uh, we're, just, we're just leading the pace, man. So it's exciting to be part of this wave, man. This wave right now is just going so fast. Excited to be part of that, man. You know, you know big part of our conversation and one of the things that uh, I saw was very impactful to you is the importance of fatherhood. Yeah. You know, the importance of, why? Because fathers in most families expose their kids to a world, right? They, they expose their kids to a better life. They expose the kids, hopefully, to avoid some of their mistakes and how to have a better life for life after them. But, uh, you know, and, and, and I think that many people look at Patrick, but David, our, our our fellow mentor, CEO of PHP Agency, 
you've been working with him a whole lot longer than I have. But a lot of people look at him as kind of like a father figure. You know, yeah. An uncle at the very least, maybe an older brother. Yep. Right? And 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 many people look up to you too, Jose, as a as a father figure, older brother and uncle. But because you're exposing them to a world and they may not have had either a present father to expose them to that type of stuff, or in your case, you never knew your dad. Yep. So yeah, it's a big, it's a big, it's a big role, man. Our society right now, it's a big role. I was reading an article that says that um, 40% of, of, of children from grade one to uh, 12th grade are raised without a father. 40% are raised without a father. And what does that lead to? What does that lead to? Early pregnancy, gangs, um, dropouts, drugs, uh, violence, the list goes on, man. The list goes on. So I was reading this article the other day and, I, and it just, and it was, I read it after Father's Day. We, we went on, we went on, on a weekend retreat. It happened to be uh, Father's Day on that Sunday. We, we took uh, about 150 of our top guys to a, a, a beautiful estate, 10 acres estate in Palm Springs. And we had a weekend there getaway with, with our top guys, their spouses, their kids. We happened to celebrate my son's birthday, Preston's birthday, his fourth birthday. Oh, cool. Uh, that that weekend, and it happened to be uh, Sunday Father's Day. Sunday Father's, so it was a great time to reflect, man. You know, uh, Godham's there is some, you know, you know, Godham and his yeah, wife, yeah. And, Gabby, and, uh, kids, and and then uh, a lot of Christian and uh, um, you know his wife and everybody was there, man. So it was just great to sit back and reflect and realize, man, on a day, on a Father's Day, so many people don't have a chance to celebrate that. They don't, and then they will forget about the the meaning, the value. And, and today, with what's happened in our society, man, the violence, um, the lack of education, all these youth, the youth, that they don't have any leadership, man, and all this stuff taking place because they don't have any good examples at home, man. And it, it starts with that example. And uh, so it, it, it means a lot to me, bro. I was raised with my mom. Mom raised four kids. Uh, my dad was in and out. He was, he was, he was there, never present. He was there, but never present. So um, my dad was there, but just not present. So I knew what I knew how not to be a great father with, with, you know, with how we handle things. So for me, it's nothing like setting a great example and, and learning from my mentors. I had two great mentors in my life. One was a guy named Stuart when I was in my age 13, 14, my teenage years from 13 years old to about 20, 324, he was a, a, a guy who was uh, I met playing basketball, became a family friend, still a friend, and he provided a lot of value at that time that I needed. And then I met my, my business mentor, my, my older brother, Patrick, um, Patrick but David, our, our mentor, and he provides so much value, so much leadership, and just, just, just teaches you how to lead by example and, uh, and how to fight. And, uh, and I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for these mentors. And, and today – with so many people that are coming through our doors, that these young men, 18 years old, 19, 20, 21, 23, same situation, nothing's changed, man. Dad's not in the picture. They, cut, they, they grow up from broken homes, from you know, violence and single parents and not a lot of money. And, I, and I've been there, man. I've been there, so yeah. I can relate. I can relate. So we know beyond teaching these guys how to make money, we talk about values, Principles, ethics, the role of a man, leadership, yep. being a provider. I mean, the list goes on, bro. And that, that you, you see these young men, they shift, man. They shift. It's not about them following you to teach them how to make some money. They want to follow good examples because they want to become good examples for their family. So it's a big issue, brother. We got to attack it. Yeah. You know, when, when, you're, when, you're cut, when you're cutting through life. Yeah. When you're cutting through life, how do you hold not? How do you not hold bitterness? How do you? I, I can imagine you may have felt that way growing up. Yeah. Um, how was it for you as, as a teenage boy? How was it for you? Because you know maybe other kids had dads and 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 your dad's present but absent, and he's not at the games. He's not at the yeah. school activity. So how did that? How did that affect you? You know, man, I had you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's when you have such a great example, like an amazing mom, 
it almost supersedes everything else, bro. Because, I mean, I'm not going to say not having a, a father present in my life is not what I wanted. It's, it's, obviously, I didn't want that or it didn't, it didn't impact me. But I can tell you, I had such a bigger impact on this side with such a great example of a, of a mom who ran her own business, raised four kids, that I was so present here. I felt like I was so present here and seeing her win. I mean, she used to distribute vitamins and go run her own business and go hustle. And she used to, a company called Shackley Vitamins. It was network. Oh, that's right. That's, that's yeah. your mom. <laughs> My mom. So oh. she, she raised four kids doing that. So I had such a, such a badass mom, man, that kind of made up for a lot of stuff that, that my father didn't provide. So, so for me, I, I know in the back of my mind, there was probably some bitterness, some bothered and all that, but I was so distracted as I got older and older and older. And then I, I was into sports, playing basketball. My outlet was playing, sport, playing ball, hanging out with the guys. That was my outlet. Um, and and I, what I all wanted to do is provide so I can help out my single mom. So uh, I, at age 13, I remember where we lived in an apartment complex across the street. There was a, uh, a little dairy market where they, you would drive in and go get your, your milk and your eggs and your bread. I became the bag boy at 13. <laughs> I was the bag boy working across the street. What, what, so what, what did you start making what per hour? What was that? What were you making per hour? I think, I think she paid me 20 bucks for, for the day, and she, she – Overworked me, underpaid me, but I, I, <laughs> but you didn't know better. It's twenty weeks you had before. Yeah, or I would eat all the food, and I, you know, I get those little chubby boy. I take a lot of food home. So I, I was doing that. So I was so distracted with being a provider at 13, 14, 15. I saw my mom work. I said, well, maybe I can go work too, and I started working at that young age, thirteen years old, 14, 15. Never stopped working. So I just, I knew the. I knew the, the, the importance of working hard, the value of hard work, being able to make my, my own money. And then I'd say, hey, mom, here's some milk. And hey, mom, here's some bread. And I used to make money at 13, 14, 15. So that was my outlet, man. So I couldn't really uh, focus on my dad not being there. I just focused on, on, um, on providing at a, at a young age and taking more responsibility at a young age. Uh, that's what I can remember, man. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's what I can remember. You know, to, to see you, because because I knew you, I knew you for a minute before you had Preston and Lukey, and uh, I remember uh, we did the RV tour or the RV tour, bro. We had a Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, it, it was at Shepherd, wasn't it? It was at Shepherd with uh, Shepherd Hills. That's right. And, that's right. <laughs> and I that's remember when I, that's when I had Lukey, right? Yeah, Lukey, and then Lukey was just freaking out about the fireworks. He took a selfie with them. He's like, ah, and you just, you just, you just got this. Glows, <laughs> laughing in the camera, and uh, I mean, it's a classic I'm, picture, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's epic, bro. You should put that. You should put that, you should put that on the wall there. Um, so yeah. how's it like now for you being being that present, involved? Uh, being a present, you know, as a father today, man. Oh man, it's just you know, it's so great, brother. It's just like, man, you look, you know, everything I envisioned for for myself, my family, uh, my kids is, is now what we're living, you know? Uh, and you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, man, I, I got to work hard. I got to provide, I got to provide. It's, it's now pay a price now or pay it later, pay a price now, pay it later. So when, you know, we were, we were grinding, we were grinding in the beginning, right? To go build and build and build and build. And then we, you know, we had a, we started a family, my wife and I, and I wouldn't be here without my amazing wife and the role that she plays. Just amazing. Um, but to be able to provide, to be able to know that my kids are worry-free. Like right now, they have a, 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 they have a, a coach, awesome coach, Eric. Eric and Mighty Sella, great people that, that help us out. And they have a coach. So every day they're at the park, they're doing drills, or, you know, they're, they're, they're mountain biking, they're hiking, they're, they're rock climbing. And to know that we can provide a, a coach for them to be active, to know that, you know, I'm a, I'm a seven minute drive from my house to go spend time with them whenever I want to spend time with them. To know that you can have, wake up and have breakfast for your kids, uh, to, uh, to teach them, to read to them, uh, to be able to take them. You know, my kids, um, before the age of four, uh, they got, they've been to Jamaica, they've been to Cancun, they've been, uh, uh, they've been to Costa Rica, they've been to Greece, they've been to Spain, 
They went to Madrid. They went to Barcelona. Uh, and these kids are uh, underage four. Think about that, brother. <laughs> they've been to more countries yeah. more than their actual age that they've been alive. Yeah, yeah exactly, brother. So to know that we, we've done that. Uh, this business has allowed us to do that and to be worry-free and to know that their future is set. It's nothing better than that, brother. Nothing better than that. So it's a great feeling, man. And it's a lot of gratitude, brother. A lot of gratitude. You know, I want to ask you about distractions because you can either be negatively distracted or you can be positively distracted. It seemed like your mom was able to positively, posit, help you get positively distracted with, yeah. with, with the grind, with the hustle. So yeah. uh, can, 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 can you unpack that in terms of being distracted the right way? Uh, no doubt, man. You're either going to have positive influences in your life or negative influences in my life. My mom's got to be the most positive woman on earth, bro. Uh, from her, again, getting into personal development at a, at, young, at a young age, her having mentors as well, her reading the, the, the Think and Grow Rich books, uh, the uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People books, the, uh, the Robert Kiyosaki's from, from day one. You can just tell she was always fed that, all that. So she's always had a positive mentality, a positive attitude. Uh, always poor belief, always poor belief from day one. She's been my biggest supporter when we started uh, the company. Uh, so that's, that's played a big role, and uh, without a doubt. And did, if, did you learn more from your mom about what she told you, what she showed you? Showed. It was all action. All action. No, no doubt about it. It's an example. All example. More things are uh, caught than taught if you're paying attention. And I, and I saw her example. So, uh, you know, uh, when I got introduced to this, this business of entrepreneurship, I, uh, I, uh, I saw the resemblance and uh, we simply just got to work. I, I had those positive influences and then I, I just simply duplicated that. I saw other people that were leading by example, my mentor, the books, the, the affirmations, the stuff you read from Napoleon Hill, the power of auto suggestion, yeah. uh, the, the vision boards the dream boards. And I simply just followed that. And I had nothing to lose. I'm broke. Um, I'm new to the business. I had the same fear and doubt as everybody else. Um, I'm thinking to myself, can I, I'm quitting every single day. I'm not making money in the beginning, but the reason, reason being because I wasn't improving and you're never going to out earn your identity. So I realized, man, my way is not working. So I got to go stick to the books. I got to stay consistent. I got to I got to have positive distractions and it, and it went from reading to doing to, to implementing to to auto suggestion, which is the affirmations to simply and then to, to lasting. Then you got to last. You got to have endurance. Yeah. You, if you don't have endurance, you're never going to get you're never gonna, you can have that breakthrough because yeah. right here, like you're going through it. Oh, my God. When am I, is it going to break through? And then you realize that you're about to have a breaking point right here. You're about to have a breakthrough. But if you stop here, you stop the reading, you stop showing up, you stop the discipline, you're never going to find out what you're capable of doing. Never. And so many people quit here. And the, the positive distractions is you showing up because you know, you know the books, you know the associations, you know being around mentors, you know the, the, the mindset, you know the power of a, of a, a positive thinking. It works. But so many people go back to their negative environment and they stay here. Yeah. And so that you, you got to be around this environment. You got to know that there's this, this, it is greener on the other side. Yeah. They say it's not greener on the other side. It, it's greener. You just never water the other side. You better freaking water the other side and see that thing green, green and manifest. So no doubt, bro, it's just the, the power of, of po being positive, the associations, all of that, man, is, it's in, is enough to allow me to have success and, and now we, we teach other people to have the same amount of success, which is, um, which is the, the best thing, man. What, what, what did you take from being a commercial collections agent? What, what did you take, take from that experience that you were able to translate to the insurance agent, to, to, to what you're thick, doing? Skin, thick skin, brother. A bunch of hangups. A bunch of no's. A bunch of like, get the F out of here. <laughs> you know? So it was thick skin. And then, um, and, then, uh, and then I hated being an employee. So I, I, I took away that I'm a very bad employee. I, I was worth a lot more. And uh, there's no way I was going to be somewhere where I wasn't appreciated. 
And um, so one, I just knew I had to get out of that room. I was, I was not born to work for somebody else. Plus having my mom as an entrepreneur, as that, that example um, is an old quote. Says it's, it's amazing how one parent or two parents can raise four or five, six kids all the way to age 18, sometimes 20, 25. But those four or five, six kids can't take care of one person or two people. Yeah. Or two people. And what is it? It's because those people haven't made a decision that they got to go out there and, and lead their lives. And they're just, they're simply leaning. Most people are leaning. They lean the, their entire lives are leaning up on the broken system, on broken corporation. There's 40 million people today that are like sick and tired of realizing, man, I've been leaning so much, not leading, leaning. And when you're leaning, you lean enough where you fall, you fall down. It takes so hard to get back up. So today it's about leading, man. You got to go lead. And uh, so once I broke away from that old environment, man, um, I just knew I was going to be an employee. I knew I needed to find an outlet uh, for me to discover what I was capable of doing, uh, for me to tap into what I was born to do. And, um, and you know what's amazing, bro, is that so many people live, you know, it's an old quote, that they live quiet lives of desperation. So many, live, so many people are quietly just getting by and it's so hurtful to them, especially right now, the 40 million people that are laid off and they're, 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 such, they're in a bad place because they feel there's no hope, there's no, there's no, there's no other ways to, to get ahead. And with the sad thing about that, Matt, is that they've been following such a, a broken system for so many years, they've actually believed there's no hope. They believe there's no way out. Yeah, they believe that it's, it's the end. This is this is as good as they're gonna, it's going to get. I'm going to get a stimulus check. And little do they know there's environments like ours where they can discover the best version of themselves. Like they can they can improve. They can read all over again. They can they can be around successful people, mentors. And, and we're in a pandemic proof industry. We've had our best income months and, and our company the last 120 days. Like it's unbelievable the kind of income our guys are making and your organization paying out probably $4 million or something like that the last a few months, right? Yeah, no, uh, yeah it's the pandemic. Yes, yeah, it's the lockdown. Yeah, same with us, man. And everyone else, they, 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 they think they're so far away from this, man, because they've, they've already been uh, conditioned to believe that. And it's sad because that's not the case, man. It's not the case. So again, breaking away from the old you, man, you got to break away. And I broke away from being a bill collector and realizing there was a, a lot more out there. And uh, I'm so fortunate that, you know, to run with, with people like yourself, your wife, and a lot of, of our peers, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an awesome environment, man. Did not having an involved father, did not having a father impact you in the business world in terms of relatability, in terms of talking to other men or women? Uh, <laughs> In, in any in any sense probably probably in a in a sense of me trying to relate to couples you know me trying to relate to couples and run couples because wow because because of the way maybe be, because maybe i didn't quite understand the dynamic of uh, that and, and a couple yeah two of them playing together because i didn't have that example maybe in that and that and that aspect thinking maybe i couldn't lead i couldn't lead those couples because I had a, a male example uh, not that I didn't have in my life before. So maybe, maybe the doubt of saying, can I lead these people? I think maybe that played a role, but as far as um, not being able to relate, the reality is 40% of people today are raised without a, a father. So if anything, uh, I was a little bit more relatable to bringing on board an, a young man or a, a, a woman to, to work because, you know, I didn't have that example and they didn't have that example and they're looking for the example and we, we could have the example here. You know, it was more, it was more, it was more relatable because so many people are raised without a father figure and they're looking for father figures. We're looking for mentors. We're looking for coaches and looking for direction. They're looking for leadership. And I think that's a, that's a big deal today, man. If we solve that problem today, the literacy will improve. Uh, the family foundation will improve. Uh, the children with the examples that they're going to have in their life is going to improve. It's going to strengthen the family. I mean, that's the pillar of the family, man. So 
it's uh, it's crucial, man. I think we gotta we gotta definitely uh, talk about that more. Yeah, you know, Jose, you, you, you when you see single men and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, people in your business, you're, you're mentoring, and they may have been raised by a single parent, right, with not an involved father. Um, is is there any um, is there any tips or suggestions or uh, mindset shifts that you have to insert to get them to start evolving as an entrepreneur, to, to get them to grasp what you're teaching them about money and, and business? For, for the people that are raised without a father? Yeah. I think it's, um, I think it's crucial, man. They, 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 they value being around an environment that talks about um, values, ethics, principles, and examples. I think it's crucial. Uh, it's very crucial, man. It's kind of like when you go to church, and you know when you know when um, so many times, how many of you guys that are watching saying, "Man, I've been invited to church, and I, I said no for a year. I said no for two years. You finally show up. You know what you say, man? Why didn't I come? You know, eighteen months ago, because <laughs> you heard what you needed to hear. Yeah. But until you get to that environment, you 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 realize what you're missing. You're like, oh my God, what spoke to me? It was the Holy Spirit that spoke to you, man. But you had to be present. And you've been denying yourself that for 12 months. But someone's been inviting you, body, because they, they, we, we all have a void. Every single person has a void in our life. There's something empty in here. Every one of us has a void. And uh, until you go and get out of your comfort zone and go somewhere that's going to challenge you to, to think a little bit differently, to be vulnerable again, to look within, to improve. Until you you go out of your comfort zone and you get there, you're never going to realize what you're missing and how to fill that void. So I relate a lot of what we do to, 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 to that, to that experience. So when people come through our doors and they're missing that father figure example, they don't have, uh, they never had a good example. They, they don't think it's possible they're lacking belief, they're lacking strength, they're lacking courage, they're not walking tall, they're a little bit insecure. Uh, when they walk through doors and they get that experience, that shock, like, man, people speaking about values and principles and leadership, it's like the juice. And then they're like, man, I'm not just here to make money, I'm here to become better. So one, you, you can't take the environment for granted. And number two, when, when people like yourself that are making millions of dollars, and we tell you, you got to read this book. You got to show up. You got to improve. It's not just twice a week. It's what are you doing when no one's looking? Because what's in the dark is going to come out to the light, right? And when we see you again, is this person improving? Is he, is he becoming better? Does he trust now? Is he still insecure? So my encouragement to the people that walk through our doors is, one, you got to believe that what you see is real. You're missing it. It's avoiding your life. And you get the right environment is going to fulfill that void, number one. Number two, if, so, if a mentor is directing you to read, to improve, to show up, to watch the videos, um, we know when you're growing and when you're dying. And when you decide to grow, then guess what? They're speaking your language. Here's a language of, of success, and here's your language. You, you keep improving. Guess what? Now you're speaking the same language. doesn't matter if you're, you're making a million and you're broke. That doesn't matter. It's a language. It's the vision. So once, once that aligns, man, you're on your way. You're on your way because the, 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 the income will catch up to the identity. And, and that's what we give them. Yep. So when you come through the doors, man, you got to embrace it all. You got to embrace it all, man. So it's, it's powerful because I've seen, we, we both have seen the transformations of people, man. Yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. So I, I want to know because... You've been with Patrick since '09. It's not like you were a leading entrepreneur then, you know. Um, and and you're, you're 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 in that year. You're making some serious decisions. Some people said something about you that you're not going to make it. Whatever the case may be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You got you put that as a chip on your shoulder, um, and you're not yet getting the attention of a mentor. You're not yet getting the attention of of probably what's going. Who's going to be going down in infamy? is probably one of the leading entrepreneurs of our generation, which is our current CEO, yeah. Bed David, who hosts a YouTube channel, not only known in the United States, but all over the world. And you and I were there when, when Patrick hosted the first Vault conference. Yeah. And you know, he was like wondering, okay, we're crossing a million subs. I don't know who's going to really show up. I don't know who's going to buy some tickets. I mean, people are spending 
five grand for a front row seat to this event, twenty five hundred for the second, third, fourth rows, and then five hundred just to get in the door. And it was jammed right there in Dallas. It was packed. I think it was like fifty three countries showed up to Patrick met David's vault conference, and, and Patrick had invited us because we've been a, a directly impacted by value attainment and teachings of value attainment. So how did, how did you get the mentorship? And you, you did a great video there with Palayo, with you guys, with, with Palayo's uh, Corvette, your Tesla, Patrick's Ferrari. That's right. Right. So how did you earn the, the, the attention, mentorship, continued mentorship of a Patrick but David, which obviously led you to becoming a cash flow millionaire? And for, for the record, when we raced the Tesla, the Z06 and the, and the Ferrari, Guess who won, right? No. Was, you, know, you know Tesla, right? <laughs> it's, was he in insanity mode? He, no, that was the basic one. I couldn't afford the insanity one, man. That was the basic one. That's a, it goes to tell you how fast those Teslas are, man. Anyway, so all my Tesla fans out there, I'm a big Tesla fan. Anyway, so, um, man, you know, uh, you know, God's got a plan, brother. It's, it, was, it was his plan for me to, to meet Pat. It was his plan for, uh, to, you know, have him as my mentor, my friend. And I'm just blessed, brother. I'm blessed that I got a chance. I got a chance to uh, be at the right place at the right time. I can tell you that. It was, uh, it was not uh, my calling, man. It was his calling. And things happened for a reason to be there. Uh, literally, I literally went to his office uh, when that happened um, back in the day. And then uh, I introduced myself. I said, I want to work with you. The rest is history. So I, I kind of recruited myself. 08, 09? That was 07. Oh, shit. 07, yeah, 07. So you and, went to go, hey, I'm, I'm, I want to work with you. That's what you said. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I was working with another, uh, another, another group, another group, and then, uh, I, and then I met Patrick, and, uh, and we had to make a switch, and uh, the rest is history, man. So one is, uh, you know, you got you to gotta be grateful to be at the right place at the right time, okay? You got to be grateful for that. And then, you know, more, like, like I said earlier, more is caught than taught. And being young in the business, and we started a company in 2009, um, I'm broke the first two years in the business, learning this business, don't know, what, don't know much about it. What was broke to you? Broke is like, bro, I'm a, my first year, I think I made 1,500 bucks. And I'm in my, my late 20s. 1,500 bucks, bro. <laughs> no joke. That's broke. It took me. That's broke. It took me eight months to get my first check because I failed my exam twice. So it took me six months to get my license, eight months for the first check, which is like 35 bucks. And I think I made like 1500 bucks that year. And then, uh, yeah, this 1500 bucks. How many people would quit? I know, huh? All my buddies. Hey, are you a millionaire yet? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't a millionaire. Okay. So, so yeah, first couple years, brother, I'm broke. So we meet me, Patrick. And then, um, and then um, he has a cast the vision of starting a PHP agency, starting a company. I look at my my girl from the time, Marlene. I said, "Babe, I'm broke. I know you're broke. We got nothing to lose. Let's just start a company. <laughs> if we make it, we make it. If we don't, we make, we don't." And that was 2009. And um, so you know, the question was about earning. I think you said about being led or leadership, right? right? Earning, earning, and keeping the attention of a mentor. Yeah. So. Brother, for me, it was a little bit different because, um, you know, when we started a company, uh, Pat was probably looking at me like, if you quit, the whole company is going to go down too, right? <laughs> so it was like, you know, I, I can't afford it for you to quit, right? And, and I, I had nowhere to go. So I wasn't going to quit. I had nowhere to go, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to quit. And then he didn't want me to quit probably, I'm sure at the time. And so it was different. It was more about a lot of faith, brother, back then, a lot of faith. And then simply following his example. He was always a reader, still is a reader, a teacher, um, a visionary, casting the vision, the dream. And, and, then, and then you cannot, you cannot fake hard work, man. You cannot fake hard work. So day in, day out. So if that, his example was being a leader, I simply just wanted to mimic that example. I showed up. He showed up. Before me, I showed up. He showed up on Saturdays, I showed up. He stayed late, I stayed late. He read books, I read books. He spoke, I decided to try and speak. 
Uh, he played hurt. I played hurt. Uh, he refused to quit. I learned, I learned to, ref to refuse to quit. He learned how to fight. I learned how to fight. So, it, bro, at that point, it was just, I was just mirroring. I was mirroring an example, right? Because, I mean, because he, he, didn't, he didn't know how to start a company. I didn't know how to lead. And, but uh, but I, what I didn't know how to do was follow a good example. And, and that's what the example that I had. And then, then boom, then that, that became not only the example, but the mentor, the coach, the leader, the challenger. And then, boom, that's, that's where the, the, the respect came because as he leveled up, I'm leveling up. Yeah. As he read books, I, I'm reading books. So what, what it, and, and I get to a point where now you, now you as a leader, you know, pa Patrick is, can be selective on who to work with, who to work with. And as a leader, you're looking for the coachable. You're, lo you're looking for the committed. You're looking for the ones that can play hurt. You're looking for the ones that uh, are not easily swayed by their emotions. They can control their emotions. They're sold out to the, the bigger picture. They're not going to bitch and complain at the next little problem that happens. You know, and then as a leader, you're observant. It's not about how you win. It's about how you play hurt. Because the wins are going to come. It's so easy when you're winning, making money. It's meant, how's this guy going to react when somebody quits, when money's tight, when family's not supporting you? So as, as, as a leader, you, you look out for that. So you can earn that, that time with the leader, the, the mentorship, and, and then it's going to pull you up. It's going to pull you up and pull you up. So you look for that as a leader. And then as, as, a, as a, someone that becomes as a follower first and you're, you know, there's a mentor, mentee, you, you got to be conscious of that, man. You got to be conscious of that and know that, hey, guess what? Other people know how to play hurt. You're just whining right now, right? Other people are actually working harder than you. You're just being lazy right now. Yeah. Other people actually are showing up and staying up later. You're, you're not. So don't complain when you're not winning. And as a leader, you got to observe that. And then you earn that right, you know, to be mentored by yourself, your wife, and other people. You know, you got to want that, man. You got to want that. Because ultimately, who doesn't want who doesn't want to make what you're making, right? Who doesn't want to live where you're at? Who doesn't want to, you know, have your bank account, right? If, right? If, 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 you, if you can go back in a time capsule or in a time machine, and you can whisper into the 20, 2009 Jose Gaetan, the 2010 Gaetan. If you can whisper something in his ear along the way, along this path, you know, the 2020 Gaetan talking to the 2009 Gaetan, <laughs> what's he whispering in his ear? Shoot, man. Uh, it's, it's all worth it, bro. It's <laughs> so worth it. It's, it's going to be so worth it. It's gonna be so worth it, man. And uh, and you you, you got you gotta stay the course. Uh, it's so worth it. And 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 you better work ten times harder. You work ten times harder because you can get it so much earlier. The financial independence, the peace of mind, uh, where you're at, uh, the, that that feeling of it being worth it is 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 worth it. It's worth not waiting ten years to get. And you go get it in two years. Go get it in three years, right? Uh, condense the time frame. So I would I would tell uh, the 2009 meme, it's so worth it and work 10 times harder and because uh, you're going to want to enjoy this life a lot sooner. And that's what I would tell anybody else is, is, is you know, you know, if you can, if you can, if you can cut, cut it back in half the time or a third of the time, of the lifestyle, the peace of mind, and the, your goals and dreams, and providing for your family and your kids, your legacy. Go work like you'd never worked before, man. You know, Saturdays, Sundays for a short period of time. Go do it. Go do it, and uh, and and stop stop bitching and about what you don't have. Uh, what's that quote? Is stop complaining about the things you don't have that you never worked hard for, or something like that. You know what quote I'm talking about? Something like that. Anyways, that's, that's what I would say, man. Be grateful for what you do have. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Jose, we, we live in a world right now. I mean, right now, today, social media is out there. Like when you and I were coming up, we didn't have social media, Facebook Lives, of 
a couple yeah. cash flow millionaires jumping out just having a convo. Yeah. By the way, for those of you just tuning in right now, I appreciate you uh, tuning in. But off camera, before we started this thing, Jose's like, you know, I'm kind of getting bored of my Lambo. <laughs> but yeah, before that, he had a Ferrari, got a Lambo. He's like, I'm bored of the Ferrari, bored of the Ferrari. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of fake mentorship out there. There's a lot of fake gurus out there. And a lot of them you, you, you've seen. You, you've, and maybe some, sometimes the people that you're mentoring – some of the people that you're mentoring may be distracted by some of these fake gurus and fake mentors. So if, if you can share with the, the folks that's watching this, what, what, kind of tri what kind of red flags do you see of somebody that's giving fake mentorship and just being a fake guru? Because you can be so jaded with somebody's online presence. They can have 100,000 followers and, you know, 100,000 subs and all this stuff. And yeah. You know, so so what 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 separates the the fake from the real? You know, you're, you when you say that, you remind me of a guy in my office. I just found out about I think a couple of weeks ago. I think his name is Martin. He's working with one of he's our newer agents, and and he was part of our one of our our mentorship sessions here in the office. And he and uh, my wife finds out. I said, oh, he comes from the mortgage world. He's or he's in real estate, and he's a young young guy. He goes. And he goes, guys, for the mentorship you guys are getting right now, for everybody else who's saying that, he says, do you know that me doing real estate, for me to get coaching from someone that I hired for, I think, 30 minutes a week or 30 minutes every couple of days or something like that, 30 minutes, he's paying $15,000 a year for it. And he says, he says, man, if I could do it all over again, I would just simply plug into the value you guys provide because, because one, you guys are... Have, have, have had the accomplishments and success. You guys have the track record and we don't charge $15,000 a year. <laughs> and so it made, it made me think a couple of things. One, I need to start charging $5,000. Right? <laughs> something. <laughs> something. I need to start charging something. No, just kidding. But then we realized the value that we had. We had so much value, so much value at, at zero cost. Uh, and we have a proven track record, a proven track record of the last 10 years. Boom. Oh of what we built. So number one, red flag, you got to have a proven track record, a proven track record of success, not only for yourself, not only for yourself. So many people have said, oh, look at me, look at me, look what I built. And that's good. That's good what you built. But show me how many other people you've duplicated. How many people have you duplicated that success? It's great that, you know, you're a rock star, but how many other people have you helped become financially independent, make a six figure, multiple six figure, seven figure income, yourself and and show me show me the, the third thing I'll say is show me that you're still in the hunt don't don't give me philosophies you don't show up to the office anymore you're on vacation six months out of the year you're living a good life you're you're not in the grind you're scared to get your hands dirty you you know your elbows dirty you're not in the grind you're not in the hunt you're not showing up you're not staying at the office late night you're not you're not showing me and you're just simply telling me of something you did years ago. No one cares about that. All the has-beens. That, uh, yeah, that's not. It's, you want to learn from a, we saw uh, the last dance together recently. You want to be with, with Michael Jordan when he's in the game. A Kobe Bryant when he's in the game and he's in the hunt. You're going to learn more from that guy than the retired Jordan, the retired Larry Bird, the retired Magic Johnson. What do you want to play with? The guys that are in the game right now, they're sweating with you. They're running with you, right? They're throwing elbows with you. That's another red flag. So, so many people that I've seen on social media today, they talk about what they've done, but they're not doing it today. They're retired, man. So, yeah, I would look out for that, bro, because there's nothing like running with people that are in the hunt today, that are building today, that have a track record today, and they're having fun with it, by the way. And they're also having fun. Some people talk about, oh, my God, when I used to have fun, when I used to do those things, th those are called bureaucrats, bureaucrats. You know, we're called one of the books, my favorite, one of my favorite books, start over here, top five book, man, I got to tell you. I talk about this all the time, barbarians of bureaucrats, uh, the, the corporate life cycle strategies. And so there's so many bureaucrats, and they're, they're not barbarians anymore. They're not in the hunt anymore. They're not grinding anymore. They're not showing up. They're not, they don't have the fire anymore. They're just simply 
They're older. They got a bigger belly usually. They're not working out. And those are called, those are called bureaucrats. The bureaucrat is, is, is there's, there's, a, there's a, uh, a graph, uphill, downhill. The downhill is the bureaucrat. That's disconnected from the guy that's got goals and dreams and passions. He forgot what it was like to be broke. And broke but hungry. Broke but hungry. So a lot of these guys you hear about, they're here, man. They don't want to be over here anymore. And, but if you can find that mentor that's here, the, the prophet, the visionary, the, the barbarian that's here, but in the hot, hungry, man, you got yourself a good mentor, a good environment versus these guys over here. So look out for that. I would say that. There's a guy I was considering as a mentor, and I remember we, us qualifying for a uh, trip to Hawaii. And I remember asking, we're having a cigar on the beach, and I asked, he was making three quarters of a million, and I was barely making 100000 right? And I'm like, dude, so tell me, man, what's it like to make 750, man? T tell me what that life is all about. And here was his answer. He said, the coolest thing about making 750 or the hardest thing about making 750 is having to get up in the morning because I don't have to. <laughs> and as, as soon as he said that, I'm like, damn, you're not a mentor. You're a friend, you're a peer, but you're not, you can't be a mentor to me. You can't be yeah. a mentor to me because... And how old was the guy? How old was he? Uh, all right, well, this is what, uh, just eight years ago. Um, maybe early 40s. Could you imagine that? Early 40s? Yeah. What do you do, retire at that age? <laughs> you know, it's, and, and I guess it, it, all, it all depends on, on what type of life you signed up for too. Yeah. If you sign up for a life to make 750 and live and chill and check out and, and not mentor anybody after that, I guess that's cool. But uh, I know both you and I have signed up for a life greater than that. Yeah. And, and by the way, come, come to think about it, bro. I mean, you know, we're, we're making cash flow millions, but amongst the millionaires, we're still broke millionaires, man. Yeah. You realize that? Everybody's like, shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're in that, we're in that, uh, the coastal lines because, because, you and I haven't said, oh, we're just chilling out with seven figures. Like, there's levels to this game. And the next level is, is becoming a decamillionaire. Yeah. 10 million dollars a year. And then after this, 20 million and 30 and 40. And we realize we're at the bottom of the next level. Yep. Just like we're at the bottom making 100,000, we want to get to the next level as a million. Okay, now we're at the next level. There's another level after that. Shit, right? there's levels to this game, man. And we're at the, we're at the bottom. 80%, we want to be now at the top 20% of the next level so we can graduate uh, to that. And, and, you know, so. Absolutely. And you know, and, and, that, and that's where the fun comes in, man. Yeah. That's where the reinvention comes in, the fun. Uh, Creation. And, 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 and you seeing that perspective and being honest and be like, that's just, we're just the bottom of the next level. And it's so true because it's not about the next 9 million we're going to make or 20 million, that's going to be great. But it's, it's that journey. It's that next journey. It's like, remember Michael Jordan coming back after three championships? Yep. Retired 18 months? Yep. Like, he already knew how to win. I want to go get to that next level. You know, so, and that's respect. And, um, and, and that's exciting to chase, man. It's exciting to chase that next version of yourself. It's exciting to chase something that's going to be there long term for you. And you can look back and say, look, you know, we didn't retire in our 40s. What are we going to do? You know, just what are you going to do in 40, 50? What are you going to do? Just live an average life? No, let's go get to that next level. Let's go reinvent ourselves. Let's go, ch let's go chase that next best version of yourself. That's where the excitement comes in. And then you have fun along the way. And then you'll, you know, you'll stumble your way to 10 million and then 20 and then 30. And then a billion dollars. So it gets, it gets it's more exciting, man. So yeah. The yeah. best part of that is just, just pulling people up and bringing people with you along the way, man. It is. So, I mean, let's talk about, let's talk about, I want to talk about TGA real quick. Yeah. Um, your company, uh, The Great Awakening, uh, uh, you know, Patrick talks about this story of we came to and you revealed it because your first name was Legacy or something. It was, it was, uh, it was a Gaetan Dynasty. Given Dynasty. by Patrick. <laughs> yeah. Given by Patrick, yeah. And so, and so he came up to Patrick and he, he, he shares the story of how how you broke the news to him, you had tears in your eyes and say, Patrick, now it's the great awakening. Why, yeah. why, why are you the great awakening? So, you know, at, at, a time in your, at a time in your life when you're not clear, you're not clear, 
uh, and we had started a company. I had a, a, a name that was given to me. I wasn't clear of who I wanted to be. I wasn't clear about what the next 10 years would look like. I wasn't clear on my philosophy. And it's very normal to be there. A lot of people are not clear. And it takes time to, to find what you're going to represent, what you're going to be clear about, what's going to be your philosophy, what's going to be your message. It takes time. So, you know, I got advice from my mentor. And he says, you got to go study, go research, go read, go get inspired, take time alone, you know, go to the beach, go, et cetera. So I started researching leaders and I was looking up people that I admire, Martin Luther King, Lincoln, uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Then I came across Billy Graham for the first time. I'd heard of the name Billy Graham, and then, but I was just researching spiritual leaders, spiritual leaders, spiritual leaders. Because <clears throat> I believe there's two different kinds of leaders. There's, there's spirit-driven, there's ego-driven. Ego is driven by today, material, and all that stuff, and, and self-fulfillment. Then you have spirit-driven, mm. which, is, which is purpose, purpose, crusade, vision, history, purpose. And then I, I said, man, this is what moves me. This is what moves me. So let me go connect with something that moves me. And I was looking for spiritual leaders. So then I look up, I come across Billy Graham. And if you don't know Billy Graham, he's one of the great evangelists in the world. He was now passed. But in his 20s and 30s, this guy was like the speaker of speakers. I mean, he would speak and light up hundreds of thousands of people, I think millions at one point, traveled the world, went to communist countries and evangelized people, and he spread the word. And then he, he, he would just touch so many lives. And this guy was on fire. Talk about man on fire. This guy was on fire. And he would speak. And I'm like, this guy was moving me. I'm like, man. And he talked about today in this world, we need spiritual awakenings. We need, you know, the Holy Spirit. We need the great awakening. And I'm like, when he said that, I'm like, boom, it hit me right here. We need the great awakening. The next great awakening thing, because historically there's been great awakenings in the 1800s, 1700s, 1900s. There's been different movements. And he said the great awakening. And when he said the great awakening, that's it. It spoke to me. I said the great awakening. The great awakening. And then our, so our team name became TJ, the great awakening. And it's inspiring greatness, building leaders. Because, you know, you got to inspire and awaken the giant within. And then you got to become a leader. In this life, you got to become a leader or you don't, you can choose not to be, but you can be a leader. So who's going to be a leader of your, of your house, for example, your last name, someone's going to lead your family. Someone's going to be the hero of your family. And I wanted to be that person. So inspiring greatness, building leaders, the great awakening. And that's been the, the message of our team. We want to be the king and queen makers and give people an identity of who they can become. So we, we see you as this person here as a new recruit. We see you as this person. You can be this person. Now we got to help you get that so you can match that identity. That's the great awakening. That's where you inspire greatness and you build leaders. And that's where it came from, man. And it's, uh, it's, we've been on fire since 2011 when we, when we launched TGA. And that's our team name. We have a lot of great teams within our teams that, that I, I believe has given a lot of our guys strong identities, you know, who, they, who they're going to become and who they're going to be. And, we have a lot of strong leaders in, in the group, so I'm grateful for the guys that we run with. Uh, I'm grateful for, you know, you know what this represents, and uh, it, it just got, it gave me it got me excited, man. In 2011, it got me a lot of clarity, and then uh, it was still a process of still reading, still understanding, and still what the message is going to be. How am I going to relate to that? And you know, and you got to be congruent. You can't say something and not be congruent. So there's a responsibility when you say something, you got to follow it. And uh, that's been our message, man. It's been, uh, it's, it's been fun. It's been fun, man. You know, and in your organization, obviously, you've created a cash flow million or two as well. Your, your, your brother and sister-in-law, Hector and Erica Del Toro. You got, yeah. the, you got the, uh, uh, the Aguilar brothers. You got yeah. Alejandro. You know, $500,000 cash flow is his is, uh, 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 older brother, yeah. <laughs> Ricky yeah. uh, and Erica. Um, you know, what they're making about 150, 160 this month. I think they're, they're projected income. You got a big fat kilo of gold. Um, uh, Crazy. So as I, as I wrap up, Jose, you know, obviously you're in the game. You're in a hunt. You're a mentor. You know, to some, you're a father figure. To some, you're an uncle. To some, you're a big brother. And, and people want to follow that, especially in this day and age where people right now walk around uncertain and 
not knowing what their next moves are. What's the type of people that you like to work with? What type of people that, that you naturally gravitate towards? Man, a type of people I like to work with, man. I like to work with people that have been through some pain, bro. People have been hurt a little bit, man. Uh, I don't like the polished people. No offense if you're polished, you got the degrees and you've had a good life. And, um, but there's a lot of people out there that are entitled. I don't like entitled people. I like the people who like to earn it. A lot of people that, that have been, uh, that are considered the underdogs because uh, they have a fight in them. They've been hurt. Um, uh, they've been, uh, you know, they've, um, people, they probably haven't, people haven't believed in them or, um, they've gone through some battles in life. Um, but they want to be somebody. I like people that, that, uh, that have a fight in them because I relate to that. You know, we, you know, when we started, man, it was, it was a fight. And we were the biggest underdogs, not only as a company, but also as an individual. So I like working with people that, that want to be somebody and they've always wanted to be somebody and they're just looking for the right environment, man. And they're just looking for a shot, bro. You know, uh, someone that's got a heart of a freaking lion and they're just looking for that to be, um, to be, uh, for, for us to help bring that out of them. And, um, and because those people I can count on, man, they, they, they already know what it's like to be down. They just want to be up and they, they have a fight in them. So I like working with people that have a fight in them. That's something to prove. Um, I don't care about your degree. I don't care about your background. That means nothing to me. I care about your fight. So if you got a fight in you, man, um, man, we're looking forward to helping you, you know, awaken that giant within bro. And, uh, and go and go chase your dreams. So, I can relate to those people, brother. That's what I'm looking for. You're, you're moving a lot of people. I'm looking at some of the comments here. Dominus Metal, he's jacked up. Mike Polaris, Pulasi, Pulalasi, he's jacked up. Rico Ramirez, Nestor Madavi, all jacked up, man. So, Jose, as I wrap up, bro, we're, how, how can people find you? How can people connect with you? How can people send you a message saying, man, I want to work together with Jose Gaetan, the Great Awakening. I, I, I have a giant within that needs to be birthed how can people get a hold of you yeah reach out to me uh, well, right now uh, on facebook reach out to me send me a message directly i mean i'm currently in orange county california but we have offices throughout the country we have leaders throughout the country and you can look me up on uh on instagram at jf gaitan jf gaitan or you can go to my website your website my website will tell you more, more about my story my background how we even got started go to mygreatawakening.net mygreatawakening.net to learn more about our story. Uh, yeah, I'd love to connect with you, man. Love to co connect with anybody. And again, Pat, uh, Matt, I appreciate uh, the invitation, brother, to be hanging out with you yeah. uh, and, uh, and sharing uh, my story, brother. Appreciate uh, the questions and uh, love running with you, brother. We wouldn't be here without, without you guys and, and the value you and your wife bring to the table and your, your organization. It's just great to run with people that that are in the hunt today and they want to go make history. So uh, I'm excited to run the next 10 years, brother. For those of you who are watching this right now, make sure you follow JF Gaetan on Instagram and MyGreatAwakening.com. Visit it. I'm just curious, for those of you who are watching this right now, uh, Patrick and David was uh, sowing a seed in Jose to start a podcast, to start a show, to, to talk about the importance of leadership and fatherhood. How many of you would watch and listen to this podcast. I'm just curious, put it in the comment section below. How many guys would watch and listen to his show that you'd be fed uh, this, these values and principles and so therefore you can execute that into your business. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking. I'd love to know your feedback. Uh, yep, it's both run with the runners. Yep, that's it, man. Mike Pulala, Pulalasi, you got some great comments here, man. And uh, Nassim Madhavi, 100%. Uh, BB, BB Patino, single mom, says me. Uh, Single parents you're attracting, bro. Gen <laughs> non gender specific. Mess my visa, of course, Latino. Uh, uh, Monique and Alvaro says, do it. Ruben Mesa says, I would. I love right? it. You got, you got some, you got some uh, feedback there, instant feedback. Uh, Jason Cruz, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jose, great, great. Hey, Ar Armit Singh says, I would. There it is. And Rowena Manalang, sure, 100%. My man, appreciate so, it. Yeah, I, I hope that's a sign. Thanks for the feedback. Appreciate it. <laughs> that's a sign, bro. Well, I, I look forward to rocking with you, man, in the next 
Right. Next version, best version of our company, ourselves, the best years of our firm, PHP agency is yet to be unfolded. It's going to be awesome to know that you and I are going to be taking it to the next levels. And the, the new cash flow millionaires of PHP are yet to be born under the leadership of the Great Awakening organization. So That's right. Jose, it's great to hang with you a little bit. Thanks for allowing me to burn my cigar without fumigating you. <laughs> it's all back. good, brother. It's all good. No, man, I appreciate you, man. All right, guys. Thank you, brother. For those of you watching this, make sure you drop your thoughts, comments below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, like our Facebook page. So you can hear some more interesting conversation about how strategy, about how to think like a millionaire, how to strategize like a millionaire, and obviously how to become a millionaire. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit notification, or hit subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. Drop your thoughts. I love to know your feedback, follow-ups, future shows. Uh, 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 topics that you like to hear. We're, we're here to serve you, help you out to get you to the next level in your life too as well. So on behalf of Jose Gaetan, hailing from Orange County, California, I'm your money smart guy here based out of Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Jose, God bless you, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you, brother. You got All it. Right, guys. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.